An innovative farm in Southland is using an environmentally friendly system called Biofiltro to treat effluent collected from dairy sheds. The system employs tiger worms and bacteria in a treatment bed that transforms effluent into a nutrient-rich humus and a translucent liquid. The technology was originally invented in South America or Chile by a doctor within the Chilean University. It was used in a number of applications in South America, from domestic to industrial. It was never really used in a dairying application like we have here today, because really the, the farming um, applications aren't as advanced as we have in New Zealand. So it was used from abattoirs to fish factories to large towns to treat the domestic and, and industrial waste. Oh, look at them. How fat that one is. It's a natural process and it uses bacteria to treat the waste and worms. The tiger worms are introduced into the bed along with the bacteria. The worms are at the top of the food chain and they serve two purposes. One is to eat the organic matter that is sprayed on top of the bed. The other is to aerate the bed, so it's an aerobic process and they cruise around in the bed and, and leave little holes and that keeps air flowing throughout the sawdust media. The waste is applied at a predetermined rate and it filters through the bed, is processed and then comes out and goes through UV treatment as the final polishing. It's not just a filtering process, there are bacteria and microorganisms within the bed media that actually break down the organic material that's, that's sprayed on it. So it's more than just a filter and what happens is the worms eat the bacteria, they're the top of the food chain as well and the worms come to the top of the bed and defecate and that is where the nitrogen and the remains which we can remove. It's a three month process to build up the bacteria mass but that's it and um, the, the bed can sustain um, no waste so if we shut down in the, in the um, off season it just um, stays stable and nothing has to be done when you turn it back on and it won't have the three month lead in time next, next season, it just starts straight away. What happens is the waste stream comes off the yard through the normal yard wash, goes through a conventional stone trap, then it goes through into this bed here which is a weeping wall. This is a twin weeping wall system. What that does is it removes the bulk of the solids from the waste stream and they can be later removed at the farmer's convenience. From there it goes to the first stage bed which the primary purpose of that is to further reduce the solids and then from that bed it's applied to the main treatment bed which has all the biological matter and the worms within it. The last part of the process is that it comes out through a UV chamber and that basically fries any of the bugs um, with UV lights and reduces the E. coli and then out to the final sump and irrigator. Basically there's about between 95 to 99% reduction in the main criteria like BOD5, there's a 95% reduction from about 15 to 1800 being normal waste down to about 30. The other major one which is E. coli is going from 3 to 5 million down to about 50 to 100. So it's, it's coming out at freshwater bathing standards. Um, not that I'm going to volunteer to swim in it. We've got a couple of samples here. This bottle here is the waste as it's going into the weeping wall. So that's basically your traditional dairy effluent straight from the yard wash. And this is after it's been through the process. And you can see that it, that it has clarity. Through the dairy process we never get it completely clear and that's because of the, the colouring or the carotene in the grass. But you can also see that it's, it's translucent um, and quite clear and that enables us to put it through the UV lights and um, get rid of the E. coli. We're very confident with how this plant's operating now with the advancements and changes that we've made. We have been learning, this plant's been running since February 2010 and we've changed it significantly. Um, we've crashed it, we've beaten it up um, and we've brought it back to life again and so through that process we've learnt a lot and it gives us the confidence of going to the open market with it now and we're really excited about it.
We've got two consents under the local regional council, Environment Southland, and we've got up to a 15 year consent for a treatment process. They are watching with great interest. The alternative is 60 and 90 day storage ponds, which are getting five to 10 year consent. So this is getting a longer consent. Um, we've also got the same technology processing waste streams for towns within the local regional council. And we've got 35 year consents for those. Peter Ross, a project engineer for the Clutha District Council, has been involved in retrofitting biofiltro systems to town wastewater oxidation ponds. We have quite a number of oxidation ponds, 10 in total, and they all have a resource consent. In 2009, Biofiltro turned up on the scene, they approached us and said they had this technology that they could treat the oxidation pond effluent further. Roughly they were perhaps half the capital cost of other alternatives we looked at, so we were pretty interested. This particular site at Stirling was being discharged direct to the Clutha. The Regional Council wanted the discharge to have a recreational quality for microbiological standards. And in round terms what that means is that they want to see no more than 250 bugs per 100 mils. From the oxidation pond itself we might average 10, 20, 30,000 bugs per 100 mils. So we needed to improve that. Roughly what's going in is maybe 25,000 bugs per 100 mils. It goes through the bed and comes out at about 1,000 and then it gets um, further treated by UV light and comes out of there uh, at something almost always less than 100. Dallas Lucas is involved in a dairy business at Winton, which was the first to install the system in a farming operation. The farm is 212 effective hectares, milking 560 crossbed Frisians. The one thing that didn't really appeal to me was the advent of the massive holding pond. I saw a lot of properties with a lot of ponds, a lot of aromas, a lot of different systems and I just probably had it in the head that if I can avoid that, I will. I'm always a balance of progress and development coupled with the environmental factors around all farming. I knew they were carrying out a small experiment at Edendale and I went and had a look at that. At that time they were about to implement it for servicing part of the Edendale Wyndham area and uh, followed through from there. Had a look at a few slides in South America of freezing works and parks and uh, thought, no, this is a path that we will follow. Didn't particularly want to be first, but somebody's got to be first. Biofiltro had been very responsible, had an understanding that was their baby. We provided the opportunity. They've handled the additional costs, which I don't know whether they were major, but just a few teething and learning points to uh, pick up with on the way through. Oh, I love it. I love it, it's a great system, I reckon. Everybody's looking at us and everybody from town's watching us as well, to making sure we're getting it right. So I suppose all it is is just trying to get things right. I don't have a big storage pond there that could spill or leak or do something stupid like that. It's a system I yeah, really don't have to worry about it a lot. There's a few things I'd do different now, but this is the Mark 1 version, there's another four after this, and it's just a matter of perfecting something, isn't it? I like the idea of not having to worry about my effluent entering into drains and things, and creeks and streams. So I'm a keen fisherman and a keen hunter, and I, yeah, we're, we're only caretakers of this land, so we have to look after it. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.